Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Uh, we're here today to present what's new in Civil 3D with the release of Civil 3D 2014. Uh, before we begin, we just want to do a few housekeeping items, so I'm going to turn it over quickly to John Rodriguez. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so if you, um, I see a couple of names, actually a lot of names here that we saw earlier this morning, so thanks for coming back for more. Um, as you uh, may see on the interface here, the console for GoToWebinar, uh, you do have an access to ask questions, even chat. We have uh, Melanie Santer monitoring that for us today. Um, also, just to make sure everybody can hear us, um, go ahead and raise your hand, and we'll get a fill for who can hear us and see us. And it looks like um, hands are going up. So that's good. Um, so I just want to make sure everything is working audio-wise. This webinar will be recorded. Um, look for follow-up information on how to access and view those recordings. I'm going to go ahead and hand it back to Jeff. All right. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Well, first I'd like to welcome back many of you who were on our webinar this morning on the Infrastructure Design Suite. Uh, we want to also welcome people that are here for the first time today joining us for our webinar this afternoon on Civil 3D 2014. Uh, before I turn it over to John, I'm going to just spend a few minutes being very brief on a little background on USCAD for those of you who may not be very familiar. Uh, USCAD was founded in 1999. We are the largest Autodesk reseller in the West United States. Uh, we are an Autodesk Gold partner. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as a professional services organization really focused on uh, identifying needs, identifying services where we can assist you, and then obviously fulfilling your needs with respect to Autodesk software. Uh, we're really focusing our company from a thought leadership perspective on building information modeling and the tools and technology that su support those aspects of your workflows on those types of projects. Uh, from a services and solutions perspective, you can really think of three key areas of our company in terms of the services we provide. Those areas include BIM consulting and implementation where we really look to uh, get under the hood and understand your workflows, your tools, and the skill sets of your personnel and help you determine how you can take advantage of the tools and become more proficient in the use of, of that software. Uh, we also continue to provide training services, open enrollment, dedicated classes on products like Revit and Civil 3D, and we do more and more custom training to meet the specific needs of your teams and the projects that they work on. And then finally, this area may be new to many of you, we do have a group focused specifically on BIM production, so if there are ever situations in which your uh, team needs additional expertise in Civil 3D or it's just a project deadline with resources needed right away, we have a group called the BIM Task Force that has the capability to take your design and model it into BIM environments such as Civil 3D and Revit. And finally, we have uh, eight office locations throughout the West. We are headquartered in Southern California, specifically at our new office in Newport Beach, and we have offices in Las Vegas and Hawaii and Utah as well. So with that said, I'm ready to turn it over to John so he can dig into Civil 3D 2014. Thank you, Jeff. So thank you for joining us today. Appreciate your attention, your time. Um, obviously, we're going to look at Civil 3D 2014. Um, occasionally, I like to sprinkle in features that may be a slightly older than just one year release. So um, if I do bring up something, it may be something that was introduced the last couple of releases that you weren't aware of, and I wanted to make note of that. So I may, may sprinkle that in as we go through that. Um, so the, the highlight areas, the areas that are important to us right out of the box would be um, these objects I have here, these, these bullet points up on the screen at the moment. Um, obviously, the number one thing that's probably very important to a lot of us is the round tripping back to 2013 capability of Civil 3D 2014. So I'll repeat that. I can round trip Civil 3D objects in their native 2014 version to users that have an earlier version of Civil 3D, that being 2013 Civil 3D without any loss of data. Um, there is a couple of items supported in 2014 that would not go backwards, and that would be related to pipe networks. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, pressure pipe networks more specifically. 
Um, user experience interface enhancement. That's always the first thing I start to look at once I've kind of figured out what version uh, of objects do I have, how can I use this product, how can I share this these objects. The next thing is how easy is it to get in and work with Civil 3D. So um, I will just sort of sprinkle that in as I'm walking through the program. Um, I only have one uh, slide really. It's this slide so I'll be into the product right away. Um, the cloud and Autodesk 360, everything's in the cloud these days. We'll talk about Autodesk 360. I'm not going to focus on it too heavily. Uh, we'll talk a little bit if you're in the AutoCAD, uh, what's new. You may have seen something called Live Maps. We have similar geo maps, a uh, little more intelligent when it comes to placement of those geo maps. We'll talk about that. Um, exchange apps. So we have exchange apps across all the products basically, so we'll look at some of those. Um, we'll look at enhancements to pressure pipe networks. If you haven't been using 2013, um, you'll notice that there's a new new type of pressure, uh, new type of pipe network. This being a pressure pipe network, um, and there's some enhancements that weren't in 2013 that um, are now in 2014. Um, very happy to announce that. Um, I may st take a step back and show you something that's been around for at least one release, and that is something called survey queries, because I think. I may have a few surveyor type people or survey functionality workflow people in here that would find that very interesting, so I'm going to bring that up also. And then we'll just talk about collaboration data exchange um, briefly as we go through that. I, it's a short session. It's about, what, seven, eight hours? No, just kidding. We have an hour. Um, I'll jump right in. Let's go ahead and take it for a spin. Um, obviously, you're going to notice a new logo for Autodesk, a new logo for Civil 3D, um, all sort of origami type uh, logos. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So um, interestingly enough, I'm going to open up and start this whole presentation with other products. So um, if you were in this session I had done just before lunch, I introduced a lot of you to a product called InfraWorks um, that you may or may not have been aware of. But as I'm moving around this product called InfraWorks, the reason why I bring this product as the first place to begin is that I can consume Civil 3D data from Civil 3D into InfraWorks, and I'm doing that through um, a format called IM, uh, IMX. So you may have seen that IMX. I'll show you that we had this IMX import. So pretty much every one of my um, InfraWorks models has started somewhere in Civil 3D with the surface, maybe some alignments um, as I work through that. So definitely working with data, and I'll show you how you can push it out from Civil 3D. Um, and then additionally, just so you can understand a little bit further, we can export, we can export an InfraWorks project or a portion of the project back to IMX. So that's important too, being able to export back to an IMX format where I would get features like alignments and surfaces to bring into my Civil 3D. Uh, additionally, if I want to share it with other products, we have FBX, I can take that into uh, Revit or even um, potentially 3ds Max. So I have these different things in InfraWorks. I'm not going to do much more here with InfraWorks. Just wanted you to see that um, I have that capability, that functionality um, in there. Um, I'm now into Civil 3D, but I'm going to switch gears again to another product called Navisworks. So um, I actually forgot that I'm doing a presentation on Navisworks this afternoon, so I'll figure that one out very shortly. Um, but as I dabble with Navisworks more and more these days, um, one of the things that's really important to me is how I can share my Civil 3D data back into Navisworks. And going back to Civil 3D, I have the ability, so I'm going to go ahead and look at this. I have the ability to take my quarter models. So we have, let's say, a really simple quarter model. And quite frankly, if I gave this to somebody to bring into Navisworks, what's going to be interesting is I'm not going to have any sort of curb solid type shape, I'm going to have a lot of feature lines connecting dots, basically points and links and shapes, but no real actual solids. So in order to actually really use a corridor in Navisworks, I need solid objects. And so we now start to have tools for this. Um, one of those tools coming up in the install of your 2014. And by the way, I'll bring this up. Um, you may want to log into your subscription center. You'll want to go into the product enhancements. Um, I don't have Subscription Center up right now, but um, you go in there, you look at the enhancements, and 
right away start looking at what enhancements the products have been released and you can start installing. So this is really a product enhancement. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the Casey translator, but that's also an enhancement. Um, we also have some subscription extensions, one of them being very important, the Autodesk Shared Reference Point extension. Um, I will be speaking more about that as I get closer to Autodesk University where I'm going to present on how to interop data between Revit, Civil 3D, Navisworks, and that's going to be a critical part of that, that equation. So we have tools that are starting to find their way into the Civil 3D environment. Um, before I get too far along, if you do have any questions and you want to ask, ask questions in the question and answer pane, um, I will try to answer as I go through this as best I can. So back to this corridor here, all I'm going to really do is quickly just talk about the fact that I can execute a, uh, a solid export. Um, I showed this sort of in the morning session, so I'm not going to walk through every step of the way, but basically I can export the baselines. Um, I can export it to a new drawing. I can export different types of solids. And then from there, I can share that data with somebody in Navisworks, where they can go into Navis, they can open and append that 3D data, that solid data. So I'll just look for it real quickly here. And um, I'll find it here, 2014 corridor solids export. And I could then bring that into this model. Um, Actually, this is kind of interesting. What I did is I, I actually in, in brought in, right now, that's the corridor. That's actually not what I wanted, so I'll, I'll remove that. That's what a corridor would look like. Um, I'm going to go backwards here and delete that, and I'll bring in the actual exported solids. Grab the wrong file. I've done that before. Um, corridor solids export, that's what I want. And um, actually, that one right there. And there we go. So now you can actually see a physical solid entity. I can zoom in there and really see. I can see that that is a solid. I can go underneath the street and see the curb, um, the, the, you know, the bottom of the curb. I can see the sidewalks, the pavement sections. And I have something that I can now use for clash detection. I can now use in my modeling uh, in Navisworks. Keep in mind these files are linked in Navisworks, so there is ways by which you can go to that object, um, use the switch back to go ahead and update as you update items, make changes as you go through that. So be aware of that. Um, additionally, I want to stay with Navisworks for just one more minute. Um, when I open up all this data, you see these pipe networks, um, you see these manhole structures, and you see these pipes. Um, these are all being shown, and they're all being displayed properly in Navisworks because I have my options set up with, first and foremost, um, file readers to go ahead and read the appropriate um, year of drawing loader version. So I'm, I'm version loading 2014 objects. And I have the object enablers installed. So if you're in the design suites, be aware that the, the object enablers are automatically installed. Um, and you want to make sure you have the right object enablers for civil 3D data to be properly displayed in Navisworks. Now, if you have to give your Civil 3D data to somebody and uh, they don't have, let's say they don't actually have the object enablers, um, one other way you can do that is a command. Now, if I type NWC and um, NWC out, oops. That's interesting. Hmm. I'll have to think about that one for a second. For some reason, I'm not actually getting that command. Um, I can actually export an NWC file from Civil 3D, um, and that would be able to then share that object out to I'm having audio changes. Um, obviously, this is multiple drawings that I have open here, so I'm opening different drawings throughout. I can turn them off using these 
these drawing tabs. Um, what I want to do is uh, switch over to the LIDAR um, import so we can talk about LIDAR a little bit. Uh, we talked a little bit about LIDAR being supported in, inside AutoCAD. Um, LIDAR is also um, supported in Civil 3D. Another way, I did a LIDAR insert or attachment earlier. Um, I can go ahead and even extract that same file into Civil 3D using my attach x-reference and I can attach a point cloud file. So the point cloud file options are RCP, RCS, PCG, and ISD. So I'll look for, let's say, um, one of those file formats. Um, here's an RCS, and I'll go ahead and bring in that LIDAR through attachment. So of course I can do that, attach it, zoom to that point cloud. Um, go to top view real quick here, and you can see there's my point cloud data um, as I'm working through that. Now, what's more interesting about this, I'm going to go ahead and do something a little bit different here. In Civil 3D, and this, is, this has been around for a little while, I'm going to go ahead and close this one down. That's just attaching a point cloud. I can physically see it. I can look at it. There's not really much more that I can do with it. Um, the other option is to actually build a point cloud object and this has been around for a while. I just like to bring it up sometimes because um, many times we forget that this exists. So I'm going to open up Import LiDAR Data. And I'm going to stop for a second. Any questions? So far so good. On the prospector, and it's been around for a little while, is the point clouds right below point groups, right, right above surfaces. Um, I can create a point cloud object. So I have the ability to create in um, I'm going to do a terrain, terrain point cloud, um, and I'm going to just go ahead and process through. Now, again, I have a lot of different formats. In this case, I'll use an LAS format. Um, I'll use an existing point cloud database just to kind of save time because um, it takes a few seconds to produce that database. So I'll go ahead and attach that one. Let that think for a second. And I'm going to go ahead and check a couple things out, finish that. Um, point clouds being processed. It's reading the database, so to speak. Um, that's not good. Let me go back. Interesting. I just did this yesterday. Had a lot of applications open. We'll try that again. Always love that, right? So it does happen even to your Autodesk reseller people. Occasional crash there. Let's go ahead and close that down. Melanie, had that happen before? Absolutely. Yeah. Let me open this drawing real quick here. Um, import LiDAR data. I'm just bring this up only because it's kind of kind of nice feature that people sometimes forget about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create that again. I'll do this really quickly. And if I have to, I'll recreate that. That might actually be what I need to do. Let me go to my, that's, that's an old database, um, so it's probably important to understand that. Let me reprocess that real quick. LAS. Let me go ahead and find that file. Here's my file. I'll go ahead and let that process. coordinate system, of course, so we can attach a coordinate system to that. I'm not going to, of course, but we can. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and let that produce. So it's being processed in the background. Um, I'm pretty sure that the reason why it crashed before is I was using a older database from previous version. So this is going through. Give that a few seconds. Melanie's going to sing to us right now. <laughs> Just kidding. There's always that dead silence. The reason why this is important to me is um, as I get this point cloud in, which has been processed, by the way, so you'll notice I have a point cloud object. I'll zoom to it. Um, here it is. And what I really want to do is I want to take that point cloud and I want to generate, because it's been processed down to just ground data, I want to create a surface from that data. So in Civil 3D, beyond just viewing it, um, I have the ability to also create a surface from it. And it's been around for a while. So again, terrain, 
I'm going to use, let's say, one foot, five foot contours. And in the case of point clouds, the data can be very large. Um, mine is a small point cloud, so I'll use the entire extent of the point cloud, but you can also minimize that um, down to a smaller region um, and then go ahead and produce that actual surface object. So there's my contours coming straight from the point cloud. So it is possible, oops, that's the wrong object, it is possible to produce an actual 3D surface from point cloud LiDAR data in Civil 3D. It's been around for a while. So we're seeing that occur more and more as we get the ability to process more and more data. Now let's switch gears into some more interesting stuff. Let's go ahead and open up some more files. Again, I talked about Autodesk 360, so when I go to open a drawing, you'll notice at the very top, open drawing from the cloud, which opens directly from your Autodesk 360 account. So if you are logged in, which you can log in and synchronize with the cloud, you can have access to your files anywhere you go. So remember that as being sort of like your iTunes for your data, your drawing data. Um, for now, just I'm going to go ahead and open a local sample. I'm going to go ahead and find some files that I want to work with. And I'm going to move into the corridor bridge modeler. So we're going to talk about bridge modeling here. <clears throat> While I'm doing this bridge model, I am going <clears> to <throat> just go ahead and launch Revit 2014 in the background. So let that launch. Um, so I'm going to go down to this corridor. I'm going to select the corridor. And I'm going to do a quick drive on the corridor um, through one of the travel ways just so that we can kind of see as I'm going along this corridor, um, clearly um, I don't have a bridge structure supporting the corridor or the drive section uh, once I get past a certain depth. And so this area as I span over this top here is missing any sort of bridge component. So what I want to do is take advantage of a new module called the bridge module and make sure that I can produce that bridge using um, targets of the terrain below. So on the ribbon tab, you'll now see the bridge modeler routine uh, program. It was originally introduced as a uh, product enhancement, subscription product enhancement. So in the past, I used to go to the toolbox to launch that and go to the subscription extension manager. Um, today, it's right in the ribbon. I'm going to go ahead and produce a, a bridge. I'll go ahead and pick one of three options here bridge concrete slab with girders, that works. And it's going to read my corridor. It's going to have one baseline. It reads the baseline. And then it allows me to pick the region. It allows me to set up which um, profile or surface do I want for the actual terrain. That's going to set up my piers and my abutments and all that with the proper depths. And I'll go ahead and let that um, produce. Looks like Revit is up and running. So as I'm running through that, you'll see concrete slab with girders. It automatically will put in my bridge layout, my roadway barriers, girder sets, girder types, abutments. I can go through all of this and establish the type of deck, the type of road I want, the girder set, the barriers. I'll go ahead with vertical barriers left and right. Um, I'm not going to change anything. However, I could go in and change things. And I'll go ahead and produce that bridge structure. So it's going to go ahead and generate this. Again, think of solids again. Think of the concept of a solid like I just did earlier with the corridor. I'm going to get a bridge solid. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this in the viewer for a second, just so we can kind of see this. And I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit here. Um, probably a good idea to change this to um, wireframe if you really want to move around a little bit. And then once you get it set up, you can uh, go to one of the other views. So there's my wireframe. I can look at it shaded. I could look at it in different styles um, as I'm working through that. So there's the actual bridge structure. And then it's attached. So if I go back and drive that corridor once again, I'll drive it one more time. we can now see that I actually do have bridge support below and it's matching terrain as it goes through there. So that's pretty interesting. Um, as I go through this, I want to stop real quick. 
what I found out, and this is something I technically hadn't even tried to do until this morning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that open, and I'm going to go over to my Revit. And what I'm going to do is um, I'll open this one. This one's actually already open and completed. But I can share this information back to my Revit environment um, and actually take it into more detailed structural design um, using the Revit tool set and the integration with Civil 3D. So um, it's very simple. It's some, somewhat simple to push this data into my Revit environment. So I'll do this real quickly using a construction template, create a new project. And just so you can see where this tool is mostly, not so much break it down here, because I have better experts that know Revit than I do. Um, but on the extensions tab of Revit, you'll see I have civil structures, Autodesk Revit extension, and you'll see that I have integration with AutoCAD Civil 3D, which is something that is interesting to me. Um, and it actually will read and import data from my Civil 3D. Um, and I can see my corridor, my existing surface, my concrete slabs, and I could bring that data in. Um, again, I just tried this out for the first time. I should have probably tried this out a long time ago, since it's pretty interesting. But it allows me to bring that data in, and here's where I could take it into more detailed design, um, rebar scheduling, rebar modeling, uh, which I'm not going to do in Civil 3D. So. We're seeing this in the suites. This is part of the infrastructure design suites. You can see my geometry is here. You can see my bridge structures here, my horizontal alignment, my vertical profile data is here, even my cross sections and my topography. So you can actually see all of this information coming straight from Civil 3D into Revit. Um, I know that's a hot topic for a lot of you. Um, so being able to share your data with your, your Revit experts, that's going to be really critical. So that's all I'm really going to show there. I'm not going to spend too much time on Revit. Not really what we want to focus on so much. But understand, as I'm doing something here, I can share it over there. I can take it more to a higher level of detail. That sound good? Everybody's nodding their head up and down. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up something else now. What's our time looking like? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. All right, great. Um, by the way, you know, just for the heck of it, I thought I would go in here and open up something. Let's change the color, the background color, and the options, just so we can see this. Um, just so you can see this, that um, there are 3D blocks that are built into your Civil 3D. It's been around, been around for a while. Street lights, trees, even uh, cones, all 3D, fire hydrants. There's all kinds of cool stuff. If you're wondering where that stuff comes from, um, you can go to the Home tab, and under the Tool Palettes, um, you'll see that there's 3D blocks. There's actually a whole palette of multi-view blocks. So we have highway signage. We have uh, vehicles, lighting, signals, um, all kinds of cool stuff that you can help create a, a pretty nice three-dimensional model, visual model, right in Civil 3D. Um, and I meant to actually show the path array, but you can use a path array, which is an AutoCAD array, and you could do like your street lights on a path array. That's a cool thing, right? That's pretty cool. Um, why I like that is later when I have those 3D blocks, I'll be able to push those up to the surface elevation using my surface tools. So I just kind of thought about that for a minute. Thought I would bring that up, make sure that you know that there's 3D blocks available to you. Um, I'm going to go to um, this one here. I may have shown this sort of. Um, in my other session on AutoCAD because I can do something very similar. But you may have exhibits where you're trying to show um, topography and maybe some geometry in the context of the real world. And it just might be a really simple exhibit. Um, and you'd like to access data and have that data be in the correct zone. Or maybe you're just trying to confirm, are you in the right ballpark? Um, we now can do that using our live map data. So for instance, on this particular drawing, I'm going to check the drawing settings, checking and making sure that I'm set to the right NAT 83 state plane zone 6 US foot. That all looks good to me. I'm set to feet. Um, once I have that all set, which of course Civil 3D can do and MAP can do, um, I'm going to type geo map. And um, I found out I think that's the only way I can launch it is by typing it. So geo map, 
Of course, all I need to do is type GE and it starts looking for it. Um, and I'm going to get the GeoMap tool. And on the command line, this is kind of cool. This goes into the user experience thing. Um, you can select from the command line. So if you ever see things in the command line, you can actually select the options right off the command line. So for instance, if I just want to see road data through the geo maps, I'm now looking at my topography and I'm seeing it as if it was right on top of my geo maps, my road data with road names. So if I'm trying to do like a really quick vicinity map, boom, there it is. That's a really cool way to do that. Um, I can go back to geo map, switch it to the aerial, and now I have a high resolution aerial. So this is pretty good stuff. So this is this is nice. This is something similar to what we were doing with Google Earth. So we were losing Google Earth as it comes from uh, the API changed it in 2012. Uh, there might have been some issues why we couldn't use Google Earth data anymore. Uh, we now have some of this information we can work with. Um, I know the next question is going to be, is there terrain data in here? Um, and the answer is no, there isn't. And if you're asking about where you can get terrain data, please reach out to us. We'll talk more about that to you. Um, we can do that offline. So I think that's interesting. I like that. I could have used that every day of my uh, working career. So geo maps. Just get a pulse of everybody in the room here. Raise your hand if you've found anything so far that you like or you found interesting that you think is going to be something useful. We've seen some bridge modeling. We've seen some mapping, geo maps. Uh, we've seen some interoperability with Revit, interface, backward coordination. Um, going back to the backward collaboration, just so we can talk about that, um, basically the way it works is if I um, trying to save backwards, I'll go ahead and do this real quick. Um, I'm currently in 2014. When I do a save, Let's go to the options real quick. When I do a save, I'm currently saving as an AutoCAD 2013 drawing format. So in 13, they introduced the 13 format. They will hold that format if it's true to Autodesk ways that they've been doing this. 13, 14, 15 will all be on a 13 drawing format. Starting in 16, we'll probably see a new DWG. If that's the way it goes, my assumption is that I'll be able to have three year three year window of interoperability. So that's 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 what I'm kind of hearing. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, while I'm in the options, since I'm here, I'd um, like to go ahead and take, take a look over here at a couple of things. Um, under system, I would recommend you check your performance settings, your 3D performance settings. Make sure you're checking adaptive degradation. If you're trying to do some manual tuning, of course, um, go through and check your manual tuning. Make sure that you have um, also your, your, the right um, graphics cards installed. Um, we are moving towards services more and more. One of the services that we're looking at providing in the near future is a civil 3D health check where we would go through and optimize your setups. Um, we do it for so many systems, so um, something to be aware of. We check those things during the setups. Um, also, we want to check your 3D modeling settings, your selection settings, all that kind of stuff. So be aware of that. Also, there's an online tab, so if you are syncing with data in the cloud, you could check your settings check how much um, storage space you have available. So be aware of those things um, and be, be on top of all those new tabs that are in the options. Now, I'm going to bring up something that's been around, been around since last year. So that's been a while, right? Um, and I'm going to start on the Home tab under Pipe Networks. And as I look at Pipe Networks, and I guess real quickly, who in here is using uh, regular Pipe Networks already? So we got uh, just a couple. That's kind of interesting. Um, who would like, OK, go ahead and put your hand down if you're using Pipe Networks right now. And let's do this. Raise your hand if you would like to use Pipe Networks. So it's like even Steven, sort of. So the ones that aren't using it would like to, and the ones that are, are using it. So that's good. Now, um, the reason why I brought that up is, um, typically, pipe networks are what I would call intermediate to advanced type usage of Civil 3D. And when I use pipe networks, I'll get things like storm drain and sewer, manhole objects, 
sanitary sewer, manholes, cleanouts, um, even some catch basins. But I don't really get the mechanical type layout tools that I'm looking for for, let's say, a water system, valves, appurtenances. So last year they introduced what is called the pressure pipe networks. So this is a new type of network. And we had one way, or actually two ways to do it. We could use layout tools and we could create it from something called an industry model. And when I used the layout tools, it was pretty interesting and it felt a lot like using a regular gravity system. I would say this is my um, pressure network. I'll call it pressure network two. And I would choose a parts list, ductile iron. I would set it to a surface um, and I'd have labels for pressure pipes, fittings, and appurtenances. And then I would go through and lay it out. Now the one thing that was different about pressure pipe networks is that it doesn't have a toolbar, it has built-in ribbon access. So the ribbon now is live. I could put my cover, um, I could establish what size pipe do I want, what type of fittings do I want. And notice the degree, 11 and a quarter, 22 and a half, 45. Those are mechanical angles that are built into the content. So I could lay out systems in horizontal fashion using a radial compass. So this radial compass would allow me to lay it out using um, specific angles that I needed. So I'll just stop there real quick. And then as I got in there, I would see that these models were actually generating a pretty nice looking 3D model with, with my valves and my you know, detailing that I'm looking for, level of detail. And so that's how I would lay things out um, in, in terms of that type of layout. For 2014, they're introducing one more layout tool, and that's going to be create pipe network from objects. So if you were using that for, let's say, a sewer system or storm drain system, um, you can do the same thing here with pressure pipe networks from objects. Those objects include lines, arcs, 2D and 3D polylines, feature lines, alignments, survey figures, um, and it will create a connected pressure pipes with bends and angles. So I'll do this from a polyline. Here's my polyline right here. Um, it shows you direction of flow. I don't know if I can see the arrow. The arrow's right there. Um, I'm okay with it because it's pressure, right? So I'll just go ahead and say okay. And then I would have the same dialog box. So this is my pressure network <clears throat> from object. I would set my pipe size set up my parts list, my surface, um, and then I would have here where I'd set up my depth of cover. If I'm using feature lines, I would choose the use vertex elevations and then tell it where those vertex elevations will define the actual pressure network, and then I can erase the original entity, and I'm off and running. So again, same, same type of output, just different way of doing it. Now, um, this is not new to 2014, but it is, it is something you should be aware of. I do have some analysis capabilities, design check and depth check. Um, in this situation, I'm going to do a design check because when I'm using the layout tools, I'm less likely to have a deflection issue. But if I'm using from object, it's very possible that I laid the data out and I didn't follow the right deflection settings. So I'm going to run this for deflection, diameter, open connection, and radius of curvature checks. And so when I run that, um, I will see right here um, that I have a deflection ex exceeding warning here. So it tells me what my maximum allowable deflection is, and it tells me what it currently is at. So that's kind of an interesting um, thing to be aware of. So if you are laying out pipes using just polylines, um, you'll have to be aware of that um, your deflection angles are set. One way to do that, of course, you can go to old school style and use your polar tracking. So if you like using polar tracking, you can set those up. That's one way. So just be aware of that. All right, so we have pressure networks from objects. We have pressure networks. That's kind of nice. Um, really briefly, real quickly, um, I don't want to get into that, into this too deeply, but there is a content, content catalog editor for the pressure pipes. Be aware that it's different than the editor that we have for our parts builder. And be aware that it's a separate executable file. And currently, the content that's shipped with Civil 3D is going to be your pipes. It's going to be your um, 
valves, and I believe T's um, are there. But there's other categories here, caps, couplings, hydrants, plugs, pumps, reducers, Ys. So there are other types of objects that we could potentially build out in the future. So be aware of that. Um, we'll, we'll learn more about that in the future. What's our time? 20 minutes. All right. So let's move along. Um, another enhancement for pressure pipes that's important to understand is the editing enhancements because to me this was probably the biggest pitfall um, is editing it vertically. We did have some tools last year we could edit the network in plan view and profile view but sometimes model view editing was a little bit tricky um, and sometimes we would have this issue. Anybody ever have this issue? Um, let me see if I can show you this issue. So we have a network, it's going through a vault or electrical duct, and it's going through another pipe. Um, probably not a good design, so I want to change that design. So in the past, how would I change that or fix that design? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in plan view, and I'll just use the grips. So for instance, I have a lengthened grip or a shortened grip in this case. I'll shorten it. So we'll see that the pipe is now shorter. Hopefully you guys can all see that. Let me move the go-to meeting out of the way. Um, I'll select this grip. You can't really see it, but there's a plus grip, and then there's an extension grip here. If I zoom in, maybe we can see that. When I pick it, I can see the compass. And the compass is currently flat. I'm going to type P, so the command line says um, straight curve P to change compass to 3D plane. So I can change the 3D plane of the compass so that now when I lay out the pipe, I'm actually working in a 3D plane, and I'm able to do a sump or a below um, layout of that pipe system and I can avoid the issue that I had. So that seems like a little thing, a little little change to how it works, but I didn't have that last year, that ability to change the 3D plane. That's going to help me a lot more. So if you're looking to do some editing in 3D with these pressure pipes and you want to do it maybe in model view with different, different angles on the compass, that's going to work also. Pretty cool stuff. What else is new for pressure pipes? Well, pressure pipes are finally um, are finally supported through the data shortcut. So you'll see my pressure pipe project, pressure networks. I can now um, share pressure networks um, and share them through data shortcut. So just like our pipe networks, we have pressure network catalog in the data shortcut environment. And then what else is new? Well, in 2013, we did not have tables. It was missing for pressure pipes. We now have um, tables set up for our pressure pipes. So if I go ahead and start my new drawing, and I start it from my US CAD style template for 2014, let's see if I can get there. So I'll go ahead and start that. And I go ahead and check my catalog pressure pipes and tables, I now have a US CAD pressure pipe table, I'll have a fitting table, and I'll have an appurtenance table. So I have styles built for that. So there's a few new styles that I had to build this year um, as I go through that. So the last thing to show you in terms of pressure pipes that are kind of important to be aware of is the ability to push them into cross sections. So this was another thing that was not really there last year. Um, we now can do cross sections. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is just my traditional cross section approach. I'll go to my alignment, um, home tab, I'll do sample lines, I'll pick an alignment here. And you'll notice here the domestic water pressure network system is now sampleable. Is that a word, Melanie? Sampleable? Sure, sounds great. Sounds good, right? We'll go with it. So it's sampleable, and we're going to go ahead and just do real quickly. I'll do um, by range of stations. Let's start with station template zero zero, and let's go to station. Let's just do like fourteen hundred, and go ahead and sample those. So we'll see. There's some samplings. And then I'll just go ahead and do uh, my sample section views, multiple views. 
Um, if you're not using this, it's kind of interesting. When you're going through and doing the new section views, um, you do have the, this tool's been around for a little while. We have production uh, options, so we actually can do this through the plant production tools. Um, I'm not going to do that for this particular instance, but I can for my plant production work, or I can just draft it like I've always done in the past. And then if I'm doing multiple section views, one of the things I like to do is I like to set it up from the mean elevation of all the sections and give it some sort of height so I have a nice consistent cross-section view. And I'll just go ahead and um, change one thing here. I don't want any labels on that surface. And I'll create the section views over here. So um, there's, there's basically my storm drain and there is my pressure pipe uh, right there. Notice I have uh, tool tips showing me the pressure pipe. Uh, the name, the style, the layer, the network, and even the size. So that seems like a little thing, but it's actually pretty big, um, very nice, something we didn't have last year with pressure pipes. All right, we're in the last 10 minutes or so of presentation. We'll open up for questions in the last five minutes. Um, let's see what I have left over to kind of sprinkle in here. So I'm going to zoom down here, and I'm going to go over to... Well, we'll go to this one here. I think this one's pretty interesting. Um, if you were in the AutoCAD session earlier, um, you may have noticed that I was using um, those geo maps just like I did earlier with Civil 3D. But you also may have seen me bring in a SketchUp model. So um, I apologize if I'm repeating myself to anybody who was in before. But this is a SketchUp model, a downloaded SketchUp model that I was able to get from the 3D warehouse, Trimble 3D warehouse. and so. Doing like a simple presentation, um, definitely this is something where I'm kind of combining SketchUp, I'm combining GeoMaps, I'm combining the, um, the bridge modeler, I'm also doing an open channel for a corridor, um, I'm doing all kinds of different stuff. The last thing I want to do with this is maybe just bring in, um, and I may, may have shown this before, so if you've seen this before, just bear with me. Um, I'm going to bring in real quickly another SketchUp. So in the featured apps, you'll see that we have featured apps, all kinds of interesting uh, featured apps, inverse points, slope direction pattern, site leveler, Civil 3D find and replace. That's really cool. Um, Civil 3D style utils. Um, there's all kinds. In fact, if you want to see them all, you can go to the Exchange apps, and you can go to the actual website and peruse all of them. So there's a lot of different ones in here. Um, solid cuts and lots of different cool stuff. So be aware of the apps. Uh, the one app I'm going to use, it's already featured in there. Um, it's going to be the import SketchUp model. So I'll bring in a SketchUp model uh, that I downloaded earlier. Hmm, where I put it is a good question. But um, I think it's in my downloads. Here we go. Um, here's a McDonald's SketchUp. I'm going to go ahead and bring that one in. Um, I'll use a different model just to make it interesting. We'll put the McDonald's SketchUp right there. Um, I will use the align command. So you guys may have seen that align command before. I'll use it again. Uh, I'll align this corner right there. I'll align this corner, let's say, right there. And I can move it into place and do some other stuff. But let's let's just look at it. I'll go into my 3D orbit or my free orbit. Spin that around. Um, no golden arches in this one, but there it is. I can place that in on top. Whoops, it disappeared on me. It's there. I think it's a graphics card thing going on. Um, but you can bring in SketchUp models. Um, combine them with your corridor models, combine them with other SketchUp models, and create a pretty cool, pretty quick um, visual. Again, I could push the surface out, I could push the alignments out, I could push all this stuff out, and then take it over to InfoWorks where I can do a little more detailed presentation of that information. So we have a couple questions. All right, great. The first question from Dave is, are there any survey enhancements? Yes, oh, thank you. Ah. We'll have to send Dave a gift because I forgot about this. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and open up. Very good. Thank you very much. I knew I had something else to talk about. Um, I'm going to go um, backward in time a little bit. I'm opening up something I did last year, but it's very important. I'm going to go to um, build to finish survey. I guess that'll be fine. 
Sure, why not? Actually, I'll do it differently. I'm going to do this. File new. We'll start from new. And I have a template. I'm pretty sure I have one around here somewhere. Uh, fill to finish for survey. So many of you have heard of fill to finish. Many of you have seen the survey, um, basically the survey um, tool space environment. It's a database environment. Um, what I'm going to do is create a new local survey database. It's going to be the solutions tour 2014. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a couple things with this, this, this database. First of all, I'm going to look at the database settings. Notice it's set to international foot. Um, there are ways to insert your preset settings for this. So if you have one already, so for instance, I have a US CAD one, I'd like to reuse it. I'm going to go ahead and pull that in. That will set up US foot, degrees, minutes, seconds, bearings, precision. So if you want to go through and reset it the way you want it all the time, just go ahead and do that push that settings as a settings file and then bring it back in. That's a great little tool. I don't know if that's new, but it's been around for a while. I'm going to go ahead and just close that database. Now I'm going to go ahead and import some data. Now I have several ways to do this. It's an import event, so I could do it right from the actual tool space. I could also do it from the um, insert tab where I can import survey data. Your choice. You can do a couple different ways. Um, this one I like because I can see a couple settings beforehand. Um, I'm going to look at what type of files can I bring in, filled book, LAN XML, point file, so raw point file, or even points in the drawing. We'll do a point file. Uh, we'll go ahead and look for that point file. Um, I'm going to look for it in my survey data. So actually, I'm going to step back here for a second. This was last year's Solutions Tour survey data. So I have one here, um, Solutions Tour Way survey. So far, nothing here is really new. Um, the previewer isn't even new. It's been around for a little while where I can preview the format, make sure I have the right format selected. Still, it's not new. Creating the network's been around. So this is my street survey of 2014. And then I'm going to just kind of double check a couple things here. Figure prefixes, I'm going to change it to USCAD survey. Process line work, yes. Um, my line work code set, I'm going to set it to USCAD survey. Make sure that I'm using my standards the way I want it to be. Um, do I want the points? Sure. Um, do I want a network object? If I want it, no, I don't. So then I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Now, in the past, this was the process that I would go through. I would bring all these points into the drawing. Whether I wanted them or not, they would come in. And then I'd be stuck with everything from that survey import event. Um, what I'd like to do what I'd like to do is go back to those points. So you'll see there's some field to finish, some automation of line geometry. I'd like to go to those survey points, and I'd like to remove them from the drawing. Again, this is not new. It's been around. What I'd like to do is bring in only certain points. So um, forgetting what my point codes were, I'm going to go ahead and double check this real quick. What time do I have? Five minutes. Five minutes. All right, we've got time. So what I'm looking for here, um, AC. So I'm going to use the code AC. Um, I'm going to create a query. So queries are new last year, or I want to say last year. It may have been even 2012. Sometimes it's hard to tell anymore. Um, survey query. So as far as what's new in the survey area, this is probably the newer feature. Um, I can open a query from a file. That's nice. But I can just generate my new query on my own right here. So what a query does, it allows you to um, set up some, some configuration here for how you access data. So this is going to be my AC points. And I'm going to, um, let me stretch this out a little bit. I'm going to query points by, and in this case we'll do um, description that contains the value AC. And you can preview that query in the drawing. So the previewer you can kind of see, let me go ahead and not dock that you can see that there's the AC points. They're kind of being previewed. I think that's correct. That's what I want. I could also go to the editor and look at those same points in the editor here. That's very nice. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, save it, save the query. And I'm going to get rid of the preview. So the points aren't in the drawing. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to go to the figures, and I'm going to uh, remove all the figures, remove from the drawing. 
And what I'm going to do now is create another query. This one's going to be my figures query. I think I spelled query right. Um, and I'm going to do figures, all of them. So basically all of the all of the query, all the figures being queried in. I like that. I'll save it. All right, again, this is not in the drawing, so this drawing is now an empty drawing. It's completely empty. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is close that drawing just so that anybody doesn't believe me. And I'll start a new drawing with the same template I did earlier. I'm going to go to the prospector and I'm going to create a new surface. This is going to be my street survey surface. And I'm going to set it to the tin. <clears throat> And in the survey database, which I'll open for edit or read only, so you can do this as a read only person, but I'll do it for editing. I'm going to notice that I have my queries are here. If I go to the prospector and I look at that same surface in here, I'm going to go to the definition and notice that I can create data from a survey query, point survey query. So I'm going to add the AC points query in here and I'm going to build start building basically my surface. So there's the starting of my surface. I'll go to my figures and I'll do the query of my figures exactly the same. I'll change the um, mid ornate distance and I'll start to build this surface out without ever having any of those objects, the Kogo points or the figures are not in my drawing. But I'm still linked to the database. Um, if, if the Database gets translated. My surface will move with that translation. The good news is I'm not carrying the weight of all those Kogo points in this drawing. So um, I don't know how, uh, I mean, how else to say it, but it's a way for you to share points. It's a way for you to also <clears throat> reduce um, drawing size. And then you could, of course, start to clean up uh, your your surface. You could do swapping edges, and you can clean up line work and add contours in there. So um, that's something that's been, a, been around since last year, but I really like it. I think it's great. Hopefully that's something nice. Uh, the other thing is that there is a survey tab in the, in the ribbon now. So um, we do have tools right in the ribbon, which we didn't have in the past. So I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to let John uh, go ahead and reiterate it to the group. The question is from Kathy, and it said, my biggest complaint with the pressure pipes was the lack of parts. When do you expect to see more appurtenances? That is a great one, Kathy. Um, so <clears throat> we we received pressure pipe networks last year. We received one catalog, uh, DIP um, catalog, and we haven't seen anything else added in 2014. We actually, ductile iron actually, um, we actually were sort of, all of us here were collectively crossing our fingers to see more content and it didn't occur in 2014 as of this point in time. Um, what I know and don't know, I guess, or can say or cannot say, is that I believe that we'll definitely see more content, but I think it could, it could take, the, take the industry to actually drive that content, and I think that industry is the, the actual manufacturers of those types of material parts, um, meaning if you were a manufacturer of pipe and valves and, and fire hydrants that having their catalog available from them might be a good way to see that build out in the future. Um, but at the moment, that's all we're stuck with. Like I had mentioned earlier, there is definitely a content editor. There is a workflow for developing and authoring parts. Um, at this point in time, we're not really providing that type of guidance. But um, as soon as we know, you'll know. Well, thank you, John, and thank you, everyone else, for participating on uh, the webinar. This is going to be recorded, so if you guys need to see it for later use, just ping us at USCAD, and we'll uh, get that information out to you. So thanks again. We appreciate your feedback. If you guys have any more questions, we'll leave the panel open for another couple